Hi everyone, this is Rose here popping in to say that there are some slight audio issues with this episode. I don't think they're really that noticeable, but I wanted to inform you of it just in case. So there are some moments where there is a slight echo on my end and moments where I am louder than Thorn. So much that my mic doesn't really like it, so just be aware of that before you listen and don't have our volume up way too loud. My husband and I use the same recording equipment, and for his software, he needs to have the mic turned up louder than me, and I did not realize it or turn it down before recording, so that one's on me. Um, I did what I could with the minimal editing abilities I possess, but some of it is still there, so just be aware of that. It is still absolutely listenable and understandable, and I really think it's minor, but I wanted to be upfront about it anyway. The other thing is that even though this is a lighter episode, there is a part where we discuss sexual assault as it pertains to a character, so please use your own discretion when listening. Otherwise, we believe this is a fun episode and we really hope you enjoy it. Um, Also, as another note, there is an update to something awful that recently happened in Thorne's life. The update is quick, but it is also sad, so please leave your well wishes and thoughts if you'd like for her. Thank you very much. And welcome everyone to the Left of the Fade, the Fedosian podcast where one human, that's me, Rose, and one elf, that would be me, Thorn, from opposite sides of the Frostback Mountains, delve the deep roads of the Dragon Age franchise to shine light on some topics that we feel haven't been given enough attention. So please join us as we journey through the dark and the light and walk the road less traveled to the Left of the Fade. Hey guys, um, first off, I wanted to apologize for our recent absence. Um, unfortunately, I lost my mother on the 15th of October. And I've been spending time with family and dealing with the aftermath of her sudden death from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, I'm hoping to raise some awareness for this condition over the next few months, maybe at some point raise some funds for research and have a better treatment. Um, I just needed some time away from the internet, from everything, really, to, uh, you know, process what myself and my family have been going through, because it was quite sudden and surprising for my mum to pass the way she did. Um, Thankfully, Rose has been amazing um, in supporting me and helping me with all this, so... um, I just want to publicly thank you for that, by the way, Rose. I, you, seriously, you've been great, and I <laughs> appreciate you more than you know. Um, I mean, I just, I'm just doing what I, what needs to be done. I, I don't, I you know, know I've, I've, I've been through it too. You know, yeah, I know. so I, I get that, and that's probably why I appreciate you more because some people would be like, uh, been through it, don't want to have to deal with it, but you, you're not like that. You're like. I want to help. And you did. So, you know. I don't uh, feel but, like know, I did anything, but... Oh, shush. You did. I'm telling <laughs> you, you did. And I'm your big sister, and that's... <laughs> shush. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that being said, I would also like to say that hope I, everyone else is doing well and staying safe during this horrid ear blight that we have going on continuously for forever, it seems... It's not going to be forever. No, I know. It's it's going to be here a while, though. That's you know, this elf needs the outside world at least sometimes. I know I spend most of my life online, but sometimes at least I would like to be outside with the trees and the the fresh air, and not so much the people because yeah, shams. But just out outdoors, it would be better than being stuck indoors constantly mm-hmm. it's, it's just getting annoying even for me and when when the hermit is getting bloody cabin fever 
You know there is something wrong. There's a problem. Seriously, you know there's a problem when the hermit gets crab uh, gets cabin fever. Those her issues can't cope. See, I <laughs> my my thing is is that before the pandemic, really the only thing I ever did was go to work in the grocery store. Mm. And during the pandemic, the only thing I do is I'm still going to work in the grocery store. <laughs> so I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not feeling like any change. However, I do think I'm going to feel it around the holidays. Um, you know, in uh, over here in America, Thanksgiving is coming up soon. Um, yeah. and it's definitely uh I'm going to feel it then and I'm going to yeah. feel it during Christmas. And that's the point where I'm probably going to be like, "Oh, Oh, because until this point, I feel like my life hasn't changed except for the two months when I was furloughed and didn't work. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah, but but for us, it was like I sort of felt it around Halloween. I mean, that was a few days after my mum's funeral, anyway. So you know, that was, yeah. was that. It was the first time I'd had to do that. Well, our- pandemic yeah. aside, your life is different, anyway. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but I... Absolutely. <sighs> but, yeah, I... <laughs> I, th- I think I kind of... I said um, Thanksgiving is coming up, so I, I feel like I've, I've sort of uh, time-stamped this a little bit. So I do yeah. want to say that this is the first episode that we are filming after the election. The election yeah. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> and I think at this point, the entire world... <sighs> knows what happened um this is after we know who who has won and i'm i'm not 100 (laughs) percent i'm happy about our terrible awful president leaving the white house oh yeah (laughs) it's not that i'm necessarily enthusiastic about who is going to be president but He's yeah, gonna be me. quite a bit better than what we have right oh, now. Oh, it's gonna be a massive improvement. I mean, <laughs> so to say that to say that he isn't gonna make mistakes and screw up would he's be, going to you know ridiculous. He's going. He's, human he's going everybody, to. Yeah, everybody fluffs. Okay, and yeah, he might even do some things that like a lot of the world will look at and go, really? He will. Was that wise? But you know, at the end of the day. Um, they say, you know... I'll take status quo over death and suffering. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I was gonna say that, you know. Uh. I was trying to find a sort of nicer way to put it, but, you know, no. Fuck it. (laughs) That's adequate enough. That works. Okay, so, uh... Life updates out of the way. Mm -hmm. Um... So, we are, we're coming back with, just with everything and stuff. Um, I had hoped to dive into some deeper stuff, but I just didn't think it was a great idea, especially for you, Thorn. Um, yeah. But it, it's, we're, we're gonna continue with some lighter stuff for now. So, yeah. Um, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I really do. So, the episode that we're going to do right now is we're actually going to discuss some NPC characters we either wish were bigger or knew more about. Yeah, because so. there, there are far too many characters in the Dragon Age universe not to be looking at them with a little more critical of an eye, trying to figure out more about them, find out more things about them. And if we could get more information straight from the source... Please, Bioware. Also, Bioware's writing. Um, <laughs> Bioware's like, writing is so good that we even care about some NPC characters. Yeah, so like that, it's a compliment. Exactly. Oh, believe me, it's a compliment when we say that we want to see more or no more. Mm-hmm. Certainly, no more about like ones that we can't see anymore of, like Duncan. Um, but yeah, there are certainly plenty that we wish we knew more about, more than anything else. Um, but yeah, let, let's start off with Duncan, because I mean, we don't really know all that much about him. It's certainly not from the gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't, it only really tells you the absolute bare minimum. 
and everything you learn pretty much is from Alistair. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that doesn't really tell you much. So it, it would be nice if we could learn more about him. Maybe in this game, there's kind of things that we wish we could get. This should have been in the things that we wish we could get in the A4. Um, but I would like to find out more stuff about Duncan, where he came from, how he grew up, what his family was like, you know, how he became a Grey Warden, the whole shebang. I want to know more about his life in the Grey Wardens, and, you know, the kind of things that he went through to make him who he was when we met him in Origin. You know, I think DLC would be would be a good thing for that. You could do, like, mm. Leliana song, where you just do, like, you know, a mini mission. Yeah. You know, that'd be a good way around it. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Sorry. Mm. Um, I'm eating right now. <laughs> it's but, fine. Um, I'm an eat and talk. I do that anyway. That's I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an incessant talker. Like seriously, I don't know how people put up with me. But yeah, we definitely. That would definitely be a good idea for Duncan and DLC, like Liliana's song, sort of, where you get to play in a group where you see how he progresses and got to. Where he is. I don't think you would be able to do it for like all of the stuff that I would want to know about him. Mm -hmm. But definitely, you could get more information through that DLC by conversations that you have and stuff like that. So you know, it's it's doable. It's definitely doable. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing that uh, that that we did is like um, just just on our own, the NPCs that we wanted to know more about. It didn't seem like there was a lot. Mm. So we did um we did ask some of our friends. Um I sort of looked on the internet to see in general what did people seem to want to know, who did they want to know more about or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I also reached out to um I'm a part of the uh the Discord for another Dragon Age podcast um entitled in Ch enchantment um a dragon age let's play podcast um and it's right. it's a it's a great podcast um at this point in time it is so much bigger than this one so <laughs> it almost feels like i don't really need to give them a shout out because if if you're so obsessed with dragon age that you're listening to this already you probably mm -hmm. also listened to them <laughs> but, um I, like i shouted out uh, another uh, YouTuber in one of my streams. Like, I, it's just the kind of stuff that we do. <laughs> like, yeah. We talk but, about the stuff that we watch and listen to and the people we talk to. But I'm going to anyway because they're they're just they're just a great they're a great podcast. The, the, the premise of them is like they're they're two friends. Uh, one has never played Dragon Age before, and the other has, and they're playing through it together. They're recording their reactions to everything while then also going in and discussing what happened and stuff. And it's great. It's hilarious. There are times where I disagree with what they're doing, and I'm screaming <laughs> at the <this> podcast. <laughs> Just like I'm sure there have been times where those listening have screamed at us. <laughs> oh, but yeah. they're mm -hmm. they're absolutely a great podcast. I definitely need to listen to them. They're they're great. Um, at the time that we're recording this, they are um they are like three fourths of the way through uh, Dragon Age Two. Um, mm -hmm. and there's quite a good back backlog of episodes. So if for some reason, you're listening to this and you haven't listened to them, then go ahead and give them a listen. They're great. <laughs> They're wonderful boys. I adore them. Just go ahead and listen. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm someone who hasn't listened to them yet, but I'm going to have to. They're great. They're wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's where we got some of these ideas from. Um, so starting out with, uh, I feel like Krem is definitely a general favorite. Um I, it seems like everyone who's into Dragon Age loves Krem. Oh, and yeah. We've stated before that we want him to be a romance. I definitely want him to be a romance in the oh, next absolutely. game. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Who would not want to romance Prometheus a classy? So I definitely like, want to know more about him. Buddha is fine. Like, seriously. <laughs> and is, he, this gonna turn into another, is this going to turn into another episode where the elf spends most of her time perving? 
Like, I'm sorry. We'll find wonder. out. <laughs> we'll find out. I don't know. Yes, we will. Yes, we there's, will. There's, well, okay, I'm looking at this for B. I don't think there's a, there's a single character on this list that I'm attracted to. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I just said Krem. I just said Krem. I'm more attracted to Krem personality-wise, physically. Mm-hmm. Um, it's physically, he's really not my thing, but his person, I just, I, I oh, man, you know, it's his his loyalty and just how devotion, like, it's, uh, this isn't, this isn't a romance episode, so I'm not gonna get into it, <laughs> but, but, uh-huh. like, as far as physically attracted, there isn't, yeah. I don't think there's really a single person on here that I'm physically attracted, oh, you know what, that's not true, never mind, we'll get into that when I get there, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but there well, is only there one, is, so. I know, I know there is one on that list that I'm both attracted to personality wise and um, looks wise bizarrely um, I, you might know which one this is I don't know but anyway we'll just get on with it because otherwise Thorne's going to embarrass herself more than she already has and she does that so many times in every episode it's hilarious it's going gonna, it's gonna to become a meme if we ever get big <laughs> uh Right, yes. Definitely, though, we, we do want to see slash know more about Krem. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it does seem to be quite a widespread opinion. Um, so then the next one that also seems pretty general um, <laughs> is Scout Harding. Uh, mm-hmm. Even more so, she seems to be someone that people want to romance. Yeah. Um, and I am personally... Uh, not, uh, not someone who really wants to romance her. I mean, part of that might just because I'm straight. I'm not attracted Mm. to women, but it's like, even then there are some that I'll be like, yeah, you know, I'll play through and I'll romance them and stuff. Like if, if, you know, like, like Bethany for, if Bethany was a romance companion and your character was not their sibling. (laughs) Yeah, because, then you know, it's not Game of Thrones. Up yeah, no. <laughs> then, then I would just because I adore her so much. Like, but, mm. but just, just I think it's just because to me, I don't have anything against her. I just feel like there isn't enough there for me to want to know more about her. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. I, I get what you mean. Yeah, I'm not against her. I just, I just feel like I haven't interacted with her too much so yeah. it's like i don't know i mean for those who want it um because we haven't really had a dwarf romance i think she would be great to have as a romance companion in the next oh, game absolutely um so yeah definitely but um just in general people seem to want to know about her and she could be a very very interesting character and i'm for it yeah i happen to think she probably is a very interesting character like, um, her personality in Inquisition is, like, really interesting, the way she behaves when she's talking to the Inquisitor. She's kind of fucking adorable, if I'm honest. Like, mm-hmm. she's she's got this cute little face, and she's just so, like, bumbly the first time she speaks to the Inquisitor. And then it's like when she sort of settles in, when you've sort of gotten to know her a bit better... She comes out of her shell a bit more, and she's just, she's brilliant. She's funny, she's smart, I just, and genuinely, I, I would. I would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, might as well be honest. And do you want to take the next one? Yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to looked this into something else that I want to know more about. Um, okay. Fiona. Um, the wonderful Meiji ex fucking Grey Warden and um, mother of Alistair. Um, general fra- favourite people definitely want to know more about her. Um, I personally want to know more about how in the name of all that is fucking Andrastian, she is the mother of Alistair. Like, 
they're, they don't look... And I know you could argue that Alistair looks more like his dad. As I would imagine he probably mm. does, based on his brother. But where does he look like Fiona? Well, I think part of that might also be overshadowed by the fact that um, when uh, a child between an elf and a human looks human. So mm. it's possible that you're seeing even less of it because... Well, you know. see, you're saying that. But didn't Fenriel, the little um, mage, half-elf, half-human from Kirkwall, wasn't he? Didn't he have pointed ears? He did, and that was that was part of the thing that they even talked about is that he didn't look human, but he also didn't look like an elf. He looked like mm. exactly in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about that, I mean, I felt could be explained either one of two ways. Either one, it was just some weird, like the genes just got together in a way that was just weird you know um uh it was just i suppose i suppose you could argue of. that um like Marek is stronger genetically than fiona mm -hmm. and perhaps uh Fainriel's mother was more sh genetically strong than his father mm -hmm. yes but i mean i don't know just it doesn't make any i don't know i just Somebody needs to explain this to me. What did it? What happened? When? How? Not exactly how, but like, how did the stars align to create my apparently perfect boyfriend? Like, well, the the other thing is, and this is my own head canon. I might be. I have nothing to base this off of. I have. This is just my own thing. It. I wonder if. Maybe um, Fenriel is three fourths elf, and mm. his father is secretly half elf, and oh. that's what happens when you get a half elf and a cool. pure pure blood elf um, mm. to have. I, I, that's that's completely head canon. I have nothing to go off of for that. That's just my thing. Um, so yeah, I wonder about that. Mm. Yeah, I get you. No, I can understand that. It's it's always a possibility. Science is a wonderful thing. It is also a bloody confusing thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, hella bloody confusing. And then, oh, my little buddy. And I think everybody's favourite. I think, I think this would probably be happy. the one that is, like, most important to people knowing about. And I would say is the one that we're most likely to know more about. <laughs> yeah, I would, like, I'm desperate to know more about him. We've known him since the first game. I've loved him in every game. I just wanted to take him home with me and keep him and look after him and make him make things for me. Sandal is just one of the best characters in Dragon Age. Full stop. And I am... Desperate to know more about that little dwarf that can work miracles. Like, how? How is he able to do what he's able to do without any sort of training whatsoever? He just can, you know? And the stuff mm -hmm. that he can do is just so phenomenal. It, it. We did blows my mind, like. Yeah, is he like? Yeah, I know. There's, there's one of the biggest questions about him is, is he the maker? Um, I guess I'm not fully convinced that he is, but if he isn't, he's definitely someone important, and he's someone who's a big deal because <laughs> he's way too powerful, <laughs> oh, yeah. and he is. So much more aware than uh, than um, is really shown. So oh, yeah. there's definitely mm -hmm. something going on with him. <laughs> like everybody thinks he's a lot slower than he actually is. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a very clever, very cl clever dwarf, possible mm -hmm. god thing. I don't even know. <laughs> 
And and also his uh, exceptional ability to enchant, I also think, must come somewhere. Like, I don't know. There, there's something going on with him, and I feel like I I just... We're, we're, th- that is not a lo- an end that they just leave loose. Like, just, we're gonna know. <laughs> well, yeah, they have to, surely. We have to know, surely. I mean, they can't do this to us. They've made us wait this long for my bloody game. Give me my game, by are <laughs> Every podcast, I said I was gonna do this. In every single podcast, and I have not changed my mind, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Give me my game already. It's getting tired, man. Go on. <laughs> but they can't. They can't leave this no. as wide open as it has been. No. From the other games, I mean, like, it's just. Although you know, little tinfoil hat theory here sneaking in. What if Sandal isn't one hundred percent dwarf? Like, what if his gen- like even if he's not the maker, obviously. What if he's not 100% dwarf? What if he's part human? Or part elf? Um, while that's possible, um, Mm -hmm. I would even like to pose the question further, considering, like, just how many questions there are surrounding him and how much he seems to know and Mm -hmm. his abilities. What if something about him relates to an old god? Ooh. What if he's either, like, the child of an old god, or what if he is an old god? Ooh, there's something I hadn't thought yeah. of. There are so many possibilities with Sandal. Like, they've really just completely left it wide he's open. He's such a mystery. Tinfoil hat interpretation, like I'm doing right now. Like, we're both doing right now. And he's he not in mystery, Inquisition at all, but you do find a note that he wrote from his Mm -hmm. I think it's like Sandal's very secret diary or something like that (laughs) and literally it only says enchantment which is just adorable (laughs) it's adorable and it's also like what does this mean enchantment like I just I love that little dude so much I really do he's amazing I want to keep him as my own anyway (laughs) Speaking of dwarves who can do miracles, really, another well-wanted favourite, like, and again, somebody who seems to pop up bloody everywhere, Dagna. This little chica, I would love to know where her interest in mages and magic and all of that kind of stuff originally came from, because I know we spoke to her in the first game and she sort of gave us an ish idea But it's not. I want to know what the actual incident was that sparked her interest exactly. The very moment she went, I want to learn about this stuff. Well, it might not have just been an interest. It might have just been like, this is something I know dwarves cannot do. I know that we do not have the ability to because it it is foreign to me and it's not something that is really, like, talked about outside because nobody here can do it i'm really Mm -hmm. interested in it so i want to know more about it it's so fascinating it's a mystery yeah i get that so i just i would like to know more about her time in the circle you know and and everything like i could just i would love to know that i can just imagine her like just loving um like research and knowledge and learning so much that she's just she's just enthusiastic about everything mm-hmm. and, and is becoming like friends with templars <laughs> the like is the best student you would ever see mm-hmm. oh yeah definitely she's like if there was to dive into one of my other fandoms she's like the hermione of dragon age mm-hmm. because she's like being completely ripped out of her comfort zone by herself, admittedly, and put in places where, rightfully, according to some, people like her don't belong, right? Mm. Um, and yet, there she is, top of her class, kicking ass and taking names, you know, just like Hermione. It, it's pretty, she's an impressive character, like, I really like Dagmar. 
I really do. I've always really liked her. Like, ever since Origins. She's super enthusiastic and peppy, and I just, it's, oh, she's yeah, just adorable. Oh, yeah, almost so. Almost <laughs> eloquently so. Like, it can get... <clears throat> and do you know what the worst thing is? What? You know what the... Uh, the reason why I like her and dislike her is she reminds me of me. Right? <laughs> you know that... Do you know how I get when I'm hyperactive and I'm like, oh, da, 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 da. everybody's killing everybody, it's awesome, everything's fantastic. And it can get like to that sort of level of, oh my, for the love of all that is important. And Thetis, Lauren, please shut up. But, you know, um, I don't because that's me, incessant natterer, the constant talker. And <laughs> I can't help myself. But, you know. I just love how, like, when you go to talk to her after she talked to you about going to the circle and you come back, you're like, did you go to the circle already? It's been, it takes two weeks to go, but, like, like, she's that, like, into it that she knows exactly how long it takes to go there and get back. Like, did you walk there yourself? Like, how do you know this stuff? <laughs> So yeah, it would be really interesting to see her again and see her opinion on like the circle and especially after the uh, the Templar and mage issues and everything to know yeah. how she stands on it. I'd be very oh, yeah. fascinated to know that. I would be very surprised, however, if she wasn't for mage freedom. Yeah, yeah, I would. Because, I would. Um, I would think she would be for mage freedom. Yeah, she strikes me as a very progressive type character. Mm -hmm. And I think that the um, the whole call for mage freedom was a very politically progressive move. Mm -hmm. um, if we're going to talk about it in like modern political terms, it was definitely a progressive move to make. And I think, I think it was the best thing in the long run, even though there was the whole um, conclave incident, because you know that was going to happen regardless. Um, as we all now know, that was going to happen regardless. So, um, you know, I, I genuinely, I don't see Dagna being the kind of person that would be like, no, we need to lock all of these people who do this amazing shit, which has fascinated me for year years, and which I'm legitimately jealous I can't actually do myself up in these big towers and keep them there away from people unless they're absolutely required. You know, I just I don't see her being that kind of person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think she would definitely be pro mage freedom. Um. Okay. So the next one that I saw as being like a general favorite that, at least to me, it seemed like quite a few people want to know more about is Felix. Um. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Dorian's friend. Uh, yeah. from Tevinter. Mm -hmm. um, that was the one who was sick, right? Yeah, the one who yeah. died. Yeah. Um, I guess there's speculation over whether or not... I, I, I feel like Dori Dorian said that they weren't involved, correct? Yeah, Dor Dorian, Dorian states that they weren't involved. I um, remember I've started uh, romances with Dorian on several occasions because the man is just too fabulous to be able to exist. Um, <clears throat> so I have started relationships with him on several occasions and I've gotten to certain different points and he definitely mentions um, I definitely asked him whether or not he and Felix were ever a thing and he, he categorically says no Okay. Um, there's no way he would have done that to um, give me a second because it's bugging me because his name is on the tip of my tongue and it, it's Alexius. He would never have done that to Alexius. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, or to himself, or to Felix. <laughs> and I very um, much believe that, but at least from oh, what yeah. I've seen, it seems like there are people who question it, and they think they might have actually been involved. Yeah, where either that or they're just I'm sort like, of stands of the ship and sort of think that it should be a thing. Well, there's nothing wrong with shipping them, but oh, no. I think it's it's more of a, a, like, I'm just little, like, he straight up said, no, they weren't, and I believe him when he says that, 
Mm-hmm. Um, cause I just, I just don't think Dorian's the type of person that would lie about that kind of thing, you know, especially to someone who is his friend. Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah, I, I, so yeah, that was, this is my only thing is like, it seemed like the, the people were like, oh, I want to know n- more about, uh, their relationship when they were together. I saw that somewhere and I'm like, they weren't together. What are you guys talking about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So... But yeah, I would, it's... Li- I would like to know more about the relationship from that time in general because it, Felix seemed like a lovely guy. He seemed like a really mm-hmm. lovely character along the same lines of uh, Dorian, you know, uh, except slightly less um, pizzazz and jazz hands. Um, but because, but other than that, he seemed like a really nice guy, just like Dorian is, you know. Well, they seem like the type of people. Um, who, you know, they're, they grow, grew up in an environment that's really toxic and stuff and sort of, mm-hmm. sort of, uh, preaching that you need to do magic this way or whatever, you know, and, and, and Dorian, you know, until he knew better and learned more about the world and stuff, probably he, it does seem like he kind of believed that, but I mean, that's, that's going to happen when you just grow up in one environment and you don't know the other yet. And a lot of ways he kind of reminds me of you that way. Yeah. Because you grew up in quite a conservative household and for most of your life until you sort of saw more of the world yourself, you believed and thought the same things that you were hearing within your household. It's only when you got older and experienced more of the world and stuff, you started to change your mind on stuff, you know? Which is exactly, you have literally word for word talked about a big reason why I love Dorian so Mm -hmm. (laughs) And but <laughs> like same here. Part of the reason I love them too. I mean, you've heard the kind of stuff that certain members of my family think. I'm not yeah. going to reiterate them on this podcast because it's just not for me to do, mm. uh, nor for the people who listen to us to hear. Um, so it's not like I came from a particularly overtly progressive background myself, mm-hmm. but my mum was very progressive. Um, and I, I learned a lot from her growing up. So mm-hmm. I'm more like her than I am anybody else in my family, really. But that's what I find. I, I, I feel like the relationship between Dorian and Felix is, is it might have been like these two people that became friends and had different ideas than everyone else around them. And they sort of bonded and were like, yeah my dad believes this and my dad believes this and Mm -hmm. we don't agree with that. We don't think that's right, you know, and it's just just that sort of, you know, you find solace in this person that, um, uh, you find camaraderie, camaraderie in this person who has similar ideas to you and similar beliefs to you in an environment that's very toxic and Mm -hmm. sort of hate-filled. Um, and I think that's, that's, really great and i you know i did not realize actually until talking about this that hmm, maybe i do want to because i was gonna say i don't really care that much about knowing more about felix but i'm just realizing maybe i do <laughs> yeah <'Cause laughs> at I least mean, when it comes to his relationship with dorian mm. i mean i want to know more about him in general mm-hmm. but because top everything all he was cute he was adorable. Like, <laughs> it, he was just a lovely wee boy, and I would have loved to have known more about him. Right, ladles, jelly spoons, and other assorted kitchenware. On to the next one, which I'm going to talk about, because, seriously, like, it, it was my suggestion. I don't think anybody else gives a shit. Right? I really don't. Really not sure. Uh, but, got him. The, um... Dwarven other half, if you're a female, uh, dwarf noble in Dragon Age Origins, he's like the he's like your other half almost, pretty much. Uh, he becomes the Dwarven Crafts fine Dwarven Crafts guy Direct in the middle of or the square, Zabar. right? Yeah, he becomes that guy, but. And yeah, we learned some stuff about him in, you know, the um, Dwarven Noble uh, origin story in 
Dragon Age Origins, but we don't learn enough, in my opinion. I need to know more about this attractive little dwarf. Like, he's just so loyal and steadfast and just such an absolute... D <clears throat> he, he's, he's a ride-or-die kind of guy, you know? I mean, he's like, I'm with you, no matter what. Good times, bad times, I am there. And the only time he couldn't be was when he didn't really get a choice. You know? So, yeah, I want to know more about Gorham. So you're really into his fine dwarven craft, then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm into his fine dwarven craft. That voice, though, as well. I like his voice. I think he's got a nice voice. But yes, I am. Definitely. Uh... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like, you know what though? That the, that is such a meme. The fine dwarf and crafts is just a meme. Oh, absolutely. It's totally possible that Bioware is just gonna at least put like a nod to it in the next game. That so, would be amazing. That yeah. would be amazing if it was a nod to Gorum <laughs> in the next game. I would I would just I'd be so happy. Like Bioware and Dragon Age are at legitimate danger. <laughs> of losing the number one position in my life for oh, no. my favorite computer game. Uh oh. Yeah, with the release of Assassin's Creed Valhalla coming. Oh in a couple of, well, no. Well, today, like today in my time, like it's now the tenth. So. So you know, <laughs> today my game comes out, and if Dragon Age don't really hurry the fuck up and give me my game. Once and again, I would sure like to reiterate that this is just a joke for Thor. <laughs> this is all a joke. She knows that you need as much time as you need to make sure I'm that aware. it's done properly. This yes. is a joke. Uh, this is definitely a joke, but give me my game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seriously, though, it is kind of at risk. If this game isn't, you know, and it doesn't need to be everything that I want it to be. Dragon mm. Age 4. It just has to be recognizably Dragon Age, right? Um, have everything I listed, including Peter Dinklage. Uh, <laughs> have everything listed? <laughs> yeah, everything I listed, including Peter Dinklage in my you know, wish list. Uh, everything you put in your wish list. Like, this game has to be everything that I have ever wanted in a computer game. Essentially. Because that is what Assassin's Creed is giving me. Uh -oh. As of today. Uh -oh. And I, I, I kid you not, I watched an hour's worth of Assassin's Creed gameplay, and for about three quarters of that video, I cried. And it was happy crying. Like, you have no idea. So Dragon Age is in danger. Oh, Bioware, no. listen up. Y'all better give me a good game, or else you have <laughs> lost first place in my heart. Assassin's Creed will overtake you. You do not want this. Oh no. You do not want the Assassin's Creed logo oh, to no. be bigger than the Dragon Age logo that I'm getting tattooed on my body. Oh, Seriously, no. this is not what we want here, okay? So, you know, beware, Dara and Co. While I'm not, while I'm not saying, saying, get thy finger out during a global pandemic, I'm not going to do that. But get thy finger out and give me my game and make it bloody good. Because... <laughs> Seriously, I said, 45 minutes of crying, like profuse sobbing uh, with happiness and oh my fucking gods, this game is beautiful. Seriously. So I, I'm genuinely being serious right now when I say that Dragon Age has some competition for my heart right now. <laughs> And that's how this became an Assassin's Creed podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 no! No, no I don't. No I don't. no 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 I no. Don't. I, don't. I mean, <laughs> I could I could absolutely do one of those, but you know, that's I, I wouldn't do that to you, Rose. I wouldn't. That would not be fair. Like, just because I'm gonna, just because I couldn't get enough of Assassin's Creed anyway. Um, I mean, I even went and bought the Etsy collection. Just because I can't get enough of it doesn't mean. <clears throat> that this is in any way, shape, or form going to change format. I know exactly what I want to talk about the most. I mean, I know what I want to play the most right now, but that's just because, seriously, I want 
Assassin's Creed to turn up in my hands like two hours ago after midnight, but it didn't. It was going to be here when yeah. it gets here. Um, can you tell I'm excited though? Seriously? I can tell. I can tell. I'm going to spend most of tomorrow streaming this game, hopefully, when it turns up. Because I've got DLC for it because I pre-ordered it, remember, and I'm just so excited. <laughs> I've only played uh, halfway through Odyssey. That's the only Assassin's Creed I've played, and um, and I only stopped because the fights were getting too hard. Because as I have said before, I do not like to fight in my games. I want the story. I want the surroundings. I want the design. I want the character relationships. I want all of that. I do not want the fighting. <laughs> Give me the fluff and none of the fights, please. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. I, and I totally understand that. While I totally understand that, I am also a very angry, aggressive Scottish person who likes hitting and stabbing things. And since I can't do that in real life, I have to do it in computer games. So, you know, to, to sort of quell the serial killer tendencies that I know grow deep within me and are, you know, as wide as the Clyde, as my mum would say. And the quite, Clyde is quite a broad, wide river, let's put it that way. So to quell that that urge to, you know, murderificate everyone around me, um, I play computer games where I can stabby kill kill stab things. You know? It, 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 it's cathartic. Um, <laughs> so that's where you and I have so many differences and yet we are so alike in so many ways. <laughs> it's really quite strange. <laughs> Genuinely. It's not that mm. strange. It seems like that's what ends up uh, be a lot of my friends are like that. So similar yeah. to me, yet you have so many differences. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so the next one. For me, this is actually what like inspired me to suggest this episode. I am absolutely obsessed with this NPC. I adore Leah. Now, yeah. if, for those who may not remember, Leah was the was the young girl um, who was kidnapped by Kelder in Dragon Age Two, mm. and a, young elf girl. Yeah, and um, basically, her father and the Templars are fighting about going it, it's during the magistrate's orders quest mm -hmm. um and and you have to go and you basically have to decide if you want to bring kelder in or kill him and stuff and all that i am so interested to know her story know more about her because um and not not only is it it's really really sad what happened to her like it's mm -hmm. um it it's basically implied that either um, either he uh, he either sexually assaulted her or was planning to. Yeah. Um, and she well, it's quite seems, heavily implied. Quite heavily implied. Um, and there's something like, and she has this like something about her is I don't know how to word this like it's she is such a good person and also I would say a little naive because she is very young I would guess about 14 um that she seems to she's very much like oh it's not his fault and the stuff empathy, like she, the she empathy wants and to try and protect that him she shows him yeah. is outstanding considering what he by all accounts put her through and and she's, so that's the thing. She's... He's completely wrong in what he did. Oh, absolutely. There are no two ways about it. Nobody, yeah. there's nobody here gonna disagree with you on that one. He's completely and utterly out of order. Absolutely, and there was mm -hmm. no excuse whatsoever. But the the empathy that she, she, her willingness to almost sort of forgive and forget, like almost. Not quite, but almost to sort of what's the word I'm looking for to advocate on his behalf, you know, was it that staggered me. Mm -hmm. Being as I am a survivor of that kind of 
action towards myself. Um, that that really did stagger me. But then again, it, it's almost as if there was almost as if there was a, like a Stockholm syndrome thing going on there. Yeah, that's exactly what I, what I was thinking. Is that there was something? I feel like she must have been with him for enough time to develop some sort of attachment to him. Uh, it, it, maybe not it, like in a romantic sense, but in like yeah. It, it, Okay, I say that it's not romantic at all. It's it's mm. gross. It's disgusting. He should not be near her. He should not be thinking of her. Like, that's just... I just mean, <laughs> like, I don't think she necessarily views him in that way. It's just yeah. sort of a... She sort of cares about him. Uh-huh. Yeah, I get what you mean. And he doesn't deserve that. And I just... It, like, it's just... Oh, man. Like, I, I truly think she is such a good person like it and it's I, I think it's her empathy towards him is misplaced and I think it's a little wrong and I think she's a little naive which understandably she's mm-hmm. uh, she's very young but uh, the, why she would but it doesn't make it he he just doesn't deserve that from her at all yeah um, I, mean, it's entire, I, I sort of I've ruminated on this question myself a few times because I'm the kind of person, I don't know what you've always done, right? Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm like. I have a very repetitive style of gameplay. I have a tendency to repeat the same things over and over and over again, make the same like decisions. And I'm trying to sort of get myself out of that. It's bloody difficult when you're autistic trying to get yourself out of like those little grooves. But I'm trying to, desperately, uh, and one of the things that I've always done is kill him. I've always killed him. Mm-hmm. Or, well, more specifically, I... I Fenris. But, um, you know, I've always disagreed. I'm the kind of person who, because of what I went through, I am extra hardline. Mm-hmm. Like, don't do that to me or there was one guy and I'm not going to go into any specifics but I threatened him mm-hmm. I physically threatened him when he wouldn't leave me alone right and that was the only way that I managed to get him to leave me alone sometimes it takes drastic measures to deal with certain types of people and this guy just seemed far too fucked up in the head which did make me wonder, what did she see? What did Leah see while she was there with him that might have influenced her to be like that? Because I get the whole, um, by all accounts, they weren't together for all that long, right? Mm -hmm. But there must have been something in that time that made her switch from only terrified of him to sort of terrified of him and feeling sorry for him. So it, that I would love to know. That is something I would really love to know and we never get an answer to. What did she see? What did she witness that made her so empathetic towards him? It's, I think there's, da- I think the demons that he was played plagued with really did have some sort of influence um because it it, it, he's complicated because um it was the whole it does seem like he did have demons that were influencing him however i also question how much was already there because he does seem to have this like you know he asks he's like make it stop you know and like he he admits that what he did was wrong you know and everything he also admits he has a predilection Mm -hmm. for young elfish children well that's the that's the other side of it is like there's a side of him that's saying there's something wrong with me i have demons and everything and all that there's something going on with me and i um and i need you to just make it stop please make it stop Mm -hmm. you know and he just wants it to end Mm -hmm. um that's definitely there but I also think there is a side of it where the evilness is actually him as well. Yeah. Because he has said that he he likes young Elvis female children. elves. Yes, yes. Which is 
so disgusting. So disgusting yeah. to say. And um and when he says she had no right to be so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that, that was the cause... moment where I was like, "You're dead. You're dead. I'm killing yeah, you. You're uh-huh, dead." That's exa- see, that's again, that's exactly the same moment where I was like, "Yep, you die, son. Yep, like so... uh, you're not getting out of this place alive. I will see to that. I don't care what I have to do." It's and it, it's interesting bringing Fenris along on that mis- mission because it's like. On the one hand, like this is one of the I'm gonna I'm gonna say very few mages, very few mages, mm-hmm. who is actually who actually is like if this guy wields magic, this is dangerous because this is a bad guy. Magic, mm-hmm. like even with like without the magic, he's a bad guy. Yeah. So this guy having magic is not a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um. So, it's, it, 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 you know, and so it, bringing Fenris along, it, it's kind of like this whole, this is a double okay, sword, it? you're seeing this example of something, mm-hmm. it's confirmation bias is what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, with him. But at the same time, um, I, I can't help but, like, draw a connection between Leah and Fenris in the sense yeah. of, like, why <clears throat> is it only, well, okay. Is there anyone else that you bring along and they can kill him, or is it just Fenris? I um, feel like it's just Fenris. I think it is just Fenris. I mean, from all that I remember, I haven't had any options to be able to ask anybody else, but I do. Okay, okay, <laughs> I'm much yeah. like you. I do take Fenris pretty much fucking everywhere with me. Yeah, I do. Too. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, even though I have a tendency to play pro mage. Like, you know I'm very pro-mage when we discuss this kind of thing anyway. I mean, how many times have we had this conversation? But hmm. but while I am very pro-mage, I'm also very pro Fenris is going to have to get used to liking mages or fucking else. Like, yeah, that's, that's how <laughs> I'm I am much, I'm pretty much ramming it down his throat every couple of minutes. Like, mages are okay. We're not all the same. Will you just quit it? Like, the, all the fucking time. <laughs> But it's like, it's like I'm, eat this truth about me, dude. I'm looking at the, uh, the, um, it's not the wiki. It's, I mean, it is a wiki. Yeah, it's a wiki. It's a wiki. Um, right now, and it does say you can either free Kelder, kill Kelder, or have Fenris kill Kelder. So it does mm-hmm. look like Fenris is the only person who could kill him. Yeah. Um, besides you. I, I was Which, thinking that that was probably the possibility anyway, number one, because elf, number two, because mage, and number three, because of the very situation that the girl was in in the first place, which that's, everybody that's knows Fenris would not accept. Yeah, it, there's definitely something in there where you could say, oh, they he's the only one who could kill, he's the only other one who could kill him just because, like, oh, this is a mage who is clearly doing wrong, so yeah, he will happily kill him. But I think like, it goes beyond that. Yeah, it's almost like um, the guy is a sort of stand-in for the guy who gave Fenris all of these lyrium tattoos. Denarius, it's yeah. Al- yeah. That's it's almost exactly as if how I felt, too. It's almost as if he's a sort of like cathartic, like, I'll get this one and then I'm getting you, kind of, like, he's almost as if he's, like, working up to it kind of thing mm-hmm. in some way, but also at the same time it's like one down, one to go, kind of keeping yeah. account of making sure that he's cleaning up the world of all these evil-ass mages. Well, and I feel but, like Fenris would definitely, you know, he would see Kelder as, like, similar to Daenerys, and then he would see Leah, and he'd be like, like, he could almost see what would lie in her future, mm-hmm. and be like, this, what has happened to you? Because, and, and this is not the episode for this. This is something I do want to discuss in a different episode. I'm but real. there is not a single doubt in my mind that uh, Daenerys did not sexually abuse Fenris. I truly believe that he did. I feel like it is very, very heavily implied. There are people out there that do not think that happened, and I don't understand how they can think that. But I very much believe that. And I feel like his uh, his tattoos burning when you touch him 
is mm-hmm. sort of like um, an analogy for him not wanting to be touched because of like, th- that's not here. That's not the episode for me to talk about this, but that's yeah. definitely something I want to touch on later on in an episode. Oh, absolutely. But I, I think there is something special with Fenris being there because I think he sees, he's like, I can see the type of future that this girl is going to have if we don't do something about this. Mm-hmm. And we have to do something about this because he, he sees himself in her in that way. And absolutely. I just, I I love br- bringing Fenris along for that mission. Mm-hmm. Um, Me as well. Yeah, for that reason. And then um, just the whole, when he says, when she's defending him, and he says in, like, the sweetest, most beautiful way possible, like, it's, it, oh, man, it just makes me weak at the knees just thinking about it. it. It's so sweet. And this is why I think Fenris... One of the many reasons why I think he's a lot more tender than people give him credit for mm. is he says she is a child and she does not understand. Mm. Um, and I think he says something to the effect of, like, admirable but misplaced or something like that. Mm-hmm. He, the tone that he takes is just so sweet and, like, so understanding. And he's like, like, you can, I feel like you can hear him hurting. Yeah, I was going to say, you can hear the pain in his delivery, like. It's mm-hmm. definitely it's some fantastic voice acting, genuinely. But, you know, we already agree on this about Benris. He has one of the finest voice actors in Dragon Age history. So. And there, there is, you know, you could go, like, really, really silly and be like, oh, yeah, definitely, totally fine, you know, which I agree with. But aside from that, just, just Gideon Emery is so talented. Like, aside mm-hmm. from the initial, his voice is hot, sort of. Angle. Well, yeah, he is so talented, mm. and as a person, he is just such a beautiful human being, and he's so sweet, and he's so kind, and like uh, it's it's you know it, we got we got um a video re- recording from him for um mine and my husband's anniversary, and it aw. was it was only supposed to be like sixty seconds long, but it was like three minutes long, and it was <laughs> oh man, it was oh man. I have a recording of him saying my name, <laughs> but it's like he seriously, he is just a wonderful human being. Like, uh, and, and I'm I'm going on a tangent here. This this is about Leah. This isn't about Gideon or Fenris, right. but it's um like like I mean, I think you can clearly tell how much I love this character. Yeah, and and even beyond that, what happens is like. Now the wiki says this happens when uh, when um, if you happens if you kill Calder, but I think this is wrong because um, I've never had this happen, and I always kill Calder. I think it's mm-hmm. the opposite. Um, and it, and you said before you always kill him no matter what. There yeah. are only two things I I um, will always choose the aggressive stance for no mm. matter what I'm playing as. I almost never choose the aggressive stance um, unless mm. I'm playing an aggressive playthrough. It's always either diplomat or, like, witty or mm. a combination of the two. Yeah, I'm usually um, way. But even Shut when I do that, there are only two instances where I will always choose the aggressive violent stance no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, choice, I should say. And that is... Um, well, one is I always kill Daenerys no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other is I always kill Kelder no matter what. Either I kill him or I have Fenris kill him. And yep. personally, I think it's so much more satisfying to have Fenris kill him. Oh, but, I would I would um, be to agree. Cause, yeah, because, like I said, I think there's so much that he, he sees Daenerys in this guy. I think there's a part of him that just feels so satisfied in doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, like, a little part of him is satiated, but... Uh, so I always kill Kelder, and I have never seen this happen. I only know it happens because I've read about it and I've watched a YouTube video of it. But uh, if Kelder lives, and I'm pretty sure it's if she if if he lives, um, uh, then in Act Three, um, you will actually encounter Leah again. And um, in the alienage, 
and that uh oh man i almost feel like i have to i have to go research this stuff either i'm wrong and you do see her if Kelder dies and i've never just had that happen or something oh. or the wiki is wrong um because i just i've just i've never had it happen to me and i've i had to like watch the youtube video of it um but anyway no matter what what the reason is or whatever um depending on your choice leah might approach approach hawk in act three in the alien edge Mm -hmm. and um and she will say that you know like oh you know it was i had no idea like i wasn't thinking right you know um and uh and yeah he was an awful guy i don't know what i was what i was thinking and um and the reason why i'm fairly fairly certain that it's if kelder lives is i believe she says she's always looking behind her shoulder she's always looking behind her and making sure she's not being followed by him mm. um i ha- i would have to check this cuz now i'm doubting myself but what happens is she joins the city guard because that situation has made her so like i think simultaneously like freaked out and she wants to be able to protect herself but then she also wants to protect other people from the same thing happening mm-hmm. and um and i think it's so fascinating that she joined the city guard because on the one hand i think they've made mention before that there aren't that many women that are in the guard and I right. don't remember seeing a single elf in the guard. Ever. And I feel like it's sort of in that, you know, the whole, the breaking the glass ceiling sort of yeah. line there. Um, and especially in a place like Kirkwall, which is built on slavery of elves. That is such a huge step. That is such a big thing to happen. For a female elf to join the city guard in mm-hmm. a city whose history is built on enslaving her people, that's wild to me. Like, that is, oh my gosh. And I can imagine that she probably probably experiences and hears, like, racism in the guard and, like, horrible comments all the time from people around her, from, from men, and especially because almost every, I would think everyone else is human. Mm. So... I just, oh, I really love her. I really want to know more about her story. I want to know what her life was like in the city guard. I want to know, like, what happened to her after um, after she was saved from Kelder. Like, it's, oh, I just, I, <laughs> like, I went right. to the point where I briefly uh, did an RP account with her <laughs> as her character. Like, I love her so much. <laughs> okay. That was very long, and I'm sorry, but I really love her. <laughs> Don't worry, not worry, not. You know what I'm like. I mean, I, I've been known to do much worse waffling than that, so don't worry about it at all. I'm absolutely terrible. I'm having real problems with my uh, Dragon Age Wiki app at the moment, actually. Seem to be getting a lot of repetition of things that aren't meant to be repeated. Like I'm trying also, to find. Also, I just noticed questions. this. This is fascinating. Oh. Um, if uh, Fenris kills Kelder, then you get friendship from Bethany, or Carver, depending on who's in your party, Isabella and Varric. Um, and right. the same thing happens if you kill Kelder yourself. But if you kill Kelder yourself, you also get friendship from Aveline and Meryl. Aveline and Meryl do not give you friendship if Fenris does it. Hmm. Why? (laughs) Well, Why? uh, What does it matter? He dies anyway. Yeah, I don't know if it's maybe like a I don't know, like you did it yourself kind of thing. You decided he had to die and then you carried out the punishment you thought he deserved sort of thing kind of like the same reason why um you can become friends with iron bull and inquisition if like you can gain friendship with him <clears throat> if you talk like uh kunari about like 
leading the Inquisition. Mm. I, I kind of think that it was maybe something like that if you're taking a more sort of leadership type role or living up to your family's sort of legacy or whatever kind of thing. Maybe it's maybe it's that or maybe it's the fact that, you know, maybe they have an issue with Benwith, who knows? The man that has wine for a diet, so you know. Uh I thought we already decided it's fruit salad. Not true, true. <laughs> I apologize profusely for it's my fruit salad. transgression. It's liquefied it's fruit, fruit salad. salad. <laughs> it's fruit salad. Um, he, he lives on a fruit salad liquid diet. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, you know, it might be because if Fenris kills him, Meryl thinks it's because he's a mage and not because he's a terrible person. That's possible. Mm -hmm. But That's I'm possible. really confused on why Aveline will not give you friendship if Fenris does it. I'm really confused, yeah, as well. especially since Fenris and Aveline get along. Yeah, they do. That's the... and that's the only thing that I can think of is like the whole honor thing. Is like you decided he had to die, and you were the one who actually swung the sword and did it yourself, kind of thing. You know? Yeah. Like the same concept as like the the old gods worship in Game of Thrones, which I've just been reminding myself of. I'm only you know, just yeah. Well, if you're only just started Game of Thrones, you'll know about this already because Ned oh, Stark. No, that's it. not what I was gonna say. I I don't I don't watch Game of Thrones like at all. But... Oh no. Um. Oh, I think we've had this conversation as well in the past. There are certain things about it you're not fond of, and I understand that. Um, they're not things which are massively played on throughout the entire series, but, you know, they are it's things not that just happen that. in the first there's episode. Just, there's just something about it that goes way over my head. Like, it's just, it's almost like it's way, way too, like, uh, heavy for me to get into. It's, yeah. Yeah, so. But I, I sort of, I got into it because it was like this massive Tolkien-esque um, fantasy world, but more relatable because it's sort of based on old British history in some sort of strange, twisted way with a fantasy twist. You know what I mean? Plus, mm -hmm. you put dragons in anything and I'll watch. You know? Yeah. Blood and boobies and dragons and I am happy. And I was happy because Dragon Age gave me... Uh, Dragon Age. Game of Thrones gave me all of those things. <laughs> so I was a happy elf. The only thing that was missing was elves. Like, seriously. Um, it's like the very first episode... Ned Stark says, the man who passes the sentence should swing the sword, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a very big part of Ned's personality, is his honour and his need to stick to that sort of old god's code. And I wonder if it's a sort of similar type of honour-based thing with Aveline. That does fit her personality. It I guess that's does. possible. It does, to be fair. I mean, she is a very honourable woman. Well, albeit in some she ways. is the world's worst flirt. Like, I've never in my life, in real life or in other computer games, seen somebody who flirts worse than Aveline Valen. Seriously, it's painful to watch. It's painful to witness. There's not a time when I have witnessed that part of Dragon Age 2 where I haven't cringed myself into the shape of a pretzel. Well, that's because she's better at swinging the sword than she is at riding it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Rose. That came out of nowhere. Damn, girl. <laughs> And I thought it was going to be Thorns Night to be fair, but I found my notch. <laughs> um. Rose is jumping in on that bandwagon too. Why? <laughs> uh, well, I'm better at jumping than Aveline. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh Wolfie, help me. I don't know if I can cope with this woman. I kind of can't, like, what she ate Indian food tonight. Like, what is that doing to her brain? I mean. <laughs> Oh, um, you know, I'm just realizing that you can read a lot into like 
into like the uh, the friendships and stuff and who gives you friendship depending on the situation and how much and stuff and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and because like also uh, it says here that if you have Carver in your party, you may not get friendship if Isabella is in your party, which is fascinating. And I don't mm. get it. And I would like to know why. Hmm. And then also Isabella gets the absolute most friendship out of everyone if he dies. Um and uh Carver's probably jealous that he can't get about Isabella. Because you think so? so. Mm-hmm. Whiny ass bitch couldn't get any uh, look, the man let's put it in this type of analogy, right? That man couldn't use his pole to fish in a barrel. It's never get no like but and Isabella's gorgeous and she's funny and she's smart and she's witty and like whip whip sharp. Like she's so quick. I just got the feeling he wasn't really into her. Like he didn't really have that much respect for her. And could be that because he's suppose, he's really he into Meryl. In fact, I people. think I think actually the reason why he's into Meryl is I have a feeling he likes sort of that innocent, sweet girl next door sort of vibe, and that's why oh, he likes you Meryl. You mean the absolute opposite of his yeah. siblings? Then I, that's why I think he doesn't like Isabella because she's not like the girl next door type. Yeah, and well, that's possible too. I mean, I'm just so. Uh, you know me, I'm anti Carver. I'm like any excuse to do him doing like I'm just I hate him. But I think it's really telling that Isabella has has the most um the most uh uh like approval if you kill him. Because mm-hmm. it's and this is something that I feel like is a little hidden under the surface and you really don't start to and even when you like get to know her really well you still sort of have to fish to figure this out um is that i think it's it's clear that isabella was also assaulted yeah um and also because she is sort of like the you know she's she's very like promiscuous uh Mm -hmm. people probably think that she's easy when she's not Uh And so they try to take advantage of that. And she's just like, yep, nope. You know, and it's... Yep. Like I said before, I feel like she's a very... uh, uh, She's a very no-means-no type of person. And Mm -hmm. consent matters a lot to her. And so anything having to do with sexual abuse, she would absolutely hate. Absolutely Mm -hmm. hate. Oh, Um, 100%. And, you know, she's even even made that comment about, like... uh, like, you know, saying that um, they're not cargo, they're people. You know, so she's definitely about people being free. People should yeah. be. I think she even says everyone should be free. You know, you should respect other people's decisions. You should respect their choices. You should just let them do what they want to do. Uh. Um, and if they tell you they don't want that, you need to leave them alone. And I think it's even in just that tiny little thing where she has the most approval if you kill him, I think you definitely see that. So it's... <sighs> yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Makes even a lot in of the sense. tiniest of things, you, there's so much into it, and I just... I oh, love this yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm, I'm legitimately the same, which is like why we started this podcast in the first place. Because mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the fact that we love having these conversations, we would never have gotten to this point. Anyway, I love Leah. I want to know about her. Please, please tell me more yes, about her. Give us give more me information a short on Leah. story, DLC, something. I want to know yeah, more about Leah. Or, or even like a life <laughs> update or something. Yes, Anything. something. Something. Mm. Right. <laughs> Next was um, somebody who I think there are, I genuinely think that there are probably quite a lot of people who want to see this character more or know more about this character simply because of how she ties in with Varric. And obviously, you know, because you've got list in front of you, that's Bianca, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I am not somebody who wants to know more about her because I like her. 
because I do not like Bianca, right? Mm-hmm. And th- this is because I am the world's biggest Varric stan, right? <laughs> I, I, seriously, that man can do no wrong in my eyes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Bloom is the god of all voice actors, just throwing that out there anyway. Um, you're lucky you landed, <laughs> you're lucky with the voice actor you landed for your favourite character that he's not a problematic piece of shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously! <laughs> like, your, your favourite character, voice actor, not a problematic piece of shit. My favourite character, voice actor, massive problematic piece of shit. Like, this is really, mm. anyway, other than We don't than need that, to talk Mr. about Bloom, him anymore. <laughs> no. Other than that, Mr. Bloom, however... Fantastic, non-problematic man. So, <laughs> at least I get that with Varric. Um, but yeah, I don't like. I don't like the way Bianca treated him. I don't like the way that Bianca treated him. I don't like the arrangement that they came to. I don't like any of the entire situation at all. I think if you love somebody and you truly love somebody, then you're you shouldn't be doing the shit that, you know, society says that you have to just because your society says that you have to. Like, fuck no. I'm sorry. Not happening. If I love... Like... If I was to live in a... (laughs) Throwing out their heavily anti-Islamic society, right? Now, the society I live in, the society that we live in, is quite anti-Islamic a lot of the time. And you know me, you know how much that fucks me off, right? Um, If somebody tried to tell me I couldn't date a Muslim man, I would tell them to, and this is a beautiful old Scottish saying, it really is, away and run up my ribs. There is not a hope in hell anybody would be stopping me from doing something which I would believe would make me happy. Whether that be, you know, dating a Muslim man, or dating a Christian man, dating a North Pagan man, dating uh, anybody of any race, gender, you know, sexual orientation, whatever, if I'm happy, who the fuck are you to judge as long as I'm not hurting anybody? Mm-hmm. And I think that the the same thing should go for, like, everyone. And I don't think that Bianca should be sticking to the whole, well, society says I have to be married to this guy, so I'm going to be married to this guy, but I'm actually in love with you, so you can't ever be with anyone. I mean, I don't, I don't believe for a second she said you can't ever be with anyone. But you know, like the entire fucking thing, the way she keeps him on a string with letters and shit like that, it just really grinds my gears. And as somebody who desperately wants Varric as a romance option, I really just want him to go snip and cut that string and let the bitch go, like the vacuous vapid balloon of empty space she actually seems to be taking up in his life. So it really does break my little elfy heart to watch him go through it. So I don't like Bianca, and that's not why I want to know more about her. But I want to know why they're in this situation that they're in right now. I suppose it's for me it's more of a thing about wanting to know more about Varric, but in order to know more about Varric I'll need to know more about Bianca as well. So it's kind of tied in, it's kind of the same thing, but it's why I wholeheartedly agreed with having her on this list. That is exactly where I'm at with her. It's, I don't like Bianca, and I and I don't really want to know more about her for her sake. Mm-hmm. I want to know, like, what happened with her and Varric. I want to know, like, what, because Varric is, I would say, quite possibly one of the most sensible people mm-hmm. in the party. And has even, like, uh, no matter who you choose to romance, um, he will pull you aside and he will say, hey, just so, I just, I want to ask you about this person. Are you sure? Because this thing, 
you know, might be an mm-hmm. issue, and I just want to make sure things are okay. Like, yeah. So he is aware of when things could possibly make relationships toxic. Yep. He is very sensible, and yet he doesn't seem to see that with himself. Yeah, because and... he's stuck in this fucking cycle. It's a never-ending cycle that he seems to have going. I want to know what the fuck is so special about this bitch. Like, like what I want to know it about her that he's so exactly, hung up on. exactly. I don't get it because she doesn't seem all that special to me. I'm not being funny. She really doesn't seem to be all that special. We did the mission with her in Inquisition. She's really not all that she seems to be cracked up to be. I wouldn't even name the crossbow after her, but you know, it's not my crossbow. So <laughs> it would be very interesting if like we had Varric again in uh in Dragon Age 4 and mm. he was just like he renamed his crossbow and we were just like oh, does that oh this means he's let go like it's I don't know if that'll happen oh, but God, oh man <laughs> he names his crossbow I, hawk or something like that I swear to the gods Rose if that happened and they made him a romance option like I am hoping he's gonna be one day and if not like I said in my wish list at least uh, a dwarf that either looks like Tyrion Lannister essentially or is voiced by Peter Dinklage or someone who sounds very like Peter Dinklage being Tyrion Lannister. Is it, ah, it's up, you get my drift. Um, <laughs> like, give me Varric because I am so in love with that dwarf it's ridiculous. Seriously. Mm-hmm. It really is. I, I mean, he is the funniest, nicest, most thoughtful pain in my ass that I have ever had. Follow me around in that game. And I love him to fuzzy death. I really do. World's biggest Varric stand <laughs> right here. I didn't tell you. Okay, so uh, the next one that I'm interested in, this isn't like, I guess this isn't as deep as the last two, mm. but Wade and Heron, uh, the uh, the blacksmith uh, like couple that you uh-huh. see in Dragon Age Origins, like they're freaking hilarious. Like they're yeah. the definition of quarreling like an old married couple. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like they're hilarious. I love them. I love how Wade is like, you know, hey, just uh, get me this stuff. Hera doesn't like me. Hera just wants me to use boring materials, but I want exciting materials. And it's like, uh-huh. can you do this for me? Just don't tell him. Don't tell him. And I, it's it's just, it's just the makings of like a comedy. And I just yeah. And then like I just want to see them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how Hera will like sort of take you to the side as you're on your way to the show and go um. You don't want to be listening to him. He's fucking mental. <laughs> you just don't just don't listen to him either about how long you said it's gonna take or what he said he can do. Just like cross your fingers and your eyes and your legs and hope for the best. That's essentially his sort of kicking you out the front door advice, you know. They've don't clearly to the been crazy together man in the back. for years. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and maybe it's not a good idea for them to both like be together and work together. <laughs> yeah, <I think laughs> because it probably... seems like it's impacting their relationship. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I would say that's definitely a possibility. Like, but I just, they're... I just want to see more of them together. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's definitely stuff going on there that, like, needs to be looked at closer. <laughs> like, I mm. also get the feeling that there is genuine love between them, but they're just so, like, irritated with each other. <laughs> you may not, like, see it all the time. And I would also like to see, like, more, like, intimate moments between them and all that. But just, they're just great. I just love them. I- that's all. <laughs> they are quite funny. They are really quite funny. Like those interactions are some of the best things about Origins. I have to admit. Um, and then the the next one, 
the one that I, I I think this is really the last of the ones that we want. Um, the others from here on out are like suggestions that we got from other people. Um, but I want to know more about Sketch <laughs> because he's just. And the thing is, I kind of forgot how amazing he was. I very recently replayed through Origins and I did all the DLC, mm-hmm. and I kind of completely forgot about Sketch. And, um, and just, like, I guess I love both Tug and Sketch, but I'm gonna be honest, Sketch kind of stuck out to me more, because he's the one on this list I think is very hot. (laughs) 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 Oh, well, we knew there was gonna be one. We didn't know there was gonna be one. Um, and, uh, but, like, he's very, he's very loyal, and he's genuine, and, like, just the friendship between him and Tug and Leiliana, like, all three of them. Like, they mm-hmm. would do anything for each other. They adore each other. They're a family, you know? Yeah. And so, in unfortunately, you know, Tug dies. But, like, you know, S- Sketch is still alive. And yeah. just, I just, I would just love to see, like, a reunion with him and Leiliana. I think it'd be so beautiful. Um, oh, we heart would break. Oh, like, he's just... You know he's 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 just great. He's like just the wonderful <laughs> person. He's very loyal and everything. Mm-hmm. And then you actually do see him again in Dragon Age Two, but you literally say like one thing to him and you're done, <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Has so, he improved looks wise by Dragon Age Two much like uh, much like Colin had? He's about the same. He looks about the same. Mm. So it's yeah. I would say he's probably slightly better looking in Origins, but I think uh. the thing is, is like because they knew he was going to be a character that was just in the DLC, they didn't really, like, really emphasize his looks that much. So he's he's pretty generic, mm-hmm. but and he's in the so his looks didn't change that much. He's still you know, but yeah, I love him. I want to know more about him. You know, yeah. I think he's great. So. Well, I can I can agree with that because that was it. it, He is kind of adorable, Mm -hmm. so you know, with you on that one. Right. What about the list? What What did people ask for? So, um, some of the uh, other people that I've asked, um, there are people who want to know more about Charter. Um, she appears in Trespasser, and she also appears in the comics, and because. She is such, like, a big part in the comics. Yeah. I actually think she is going to be in Dragon Age 4. Wow. Now, I, I would like to point out that, unfortunately, due to certain circumstances, such as EA and Bioware deciding that they weren't going to be releasing any more DLC for DAI onto the PS3, it wasn't until I got a PS4 that I was actually able to get the Trespasser DLC because that was yeah. the last DLC and you weren't able to get it on PS3 at all <clears throat> so yeah I, I heard had to about wait that until, I had to wait until I got a PS4 for that please do not pull that crap with us again guys especially since Trespasser was a big DLC the Trespasser was it's, huge and like it was very important game changing important like, as in the entire bloody context of the game you've just played is changed. Your whole fucking life has just been changed. And one it's DLC. also like, it kicks off <clears throat> what happens in the next game. Yep. In Dragon Age 4. Now, we don't so know what the plot is yet, but mm-hmm. they've made it pretty clear that that's what Dragon Age 4 is going to be about. Yeah. So I mean, th- they've hardly kept quiet about my egg-headed boy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, because so. I do love Solus. I am a bit of, I do have a bit of a soft spot for that soft boiled egg, you know, mm. but can't help it. It's, it's an elf thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, I've, I've, so until I got a PlayStation 4, I actually had no opportunity to play Trespasser. And as a, such a huge Colin fan, I have wanted nothing more than to marry that man. 
since like the first game. Seriously. When I first played Dragon Age Origins as a mage, and I met Cullen, and he was all flustered and fucking adorable, I just, I, I just, I want, like, right then and there, I was like, I, I want, to, I want you, you're mine, like, that's, that's it, and it only got stronger from there, I mean, obviously, there's a disagreement about the way he is with mages in Dragon Age 2, but, you know, given his experiences in Origins, it's sort of to be expected, and given the fact he was under Meredith, but, yeah, mm. really quite gutted that I never got the chance to play Trespasser. So I've never seen the end of all things. You know, the the ending of the entire game. Wait, so you to From this day person, haven't? To this day, I haven't managed to get to Trespasser yet because of various different millions of other things that have been going on. But you, I mean, obviously, you know what happens. Yeah, I know what happens. I mean, I've, I'd have had to have been. I'm a Dragon Age fan nerd i would have had to have been living under a rock for the past god knows how many years to not That's actually really know what upsetting that to this day you haven't played it yeah tell me about it but it, it's coming it's coming and i'm thinking that i might stream it when i do actually do it i'm not entirely oh sure. i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it honestly it's cool it's just this is what this is what comes of being broke and not being able to you know work for a living because of having various different health conditions that mean that you can't pretty much can't leave the house for one reason or another. You know, it's it's it is what it is. As I've said before, it I pretty much just play with the cards I'm dealt. I somehow again, was magically dealt, able to avoid spoilers when I played it, so yeah. I was like, holy crap. Okay. <laughs> oh, there, are, there are still definitely things, parts of it where I'm gonna be like, oh so, you know, if and when I do stream it, I advise people to tune into that because that should be fun because, you know, a thorn reaction to anything is hilarious by all accounts. <laughs> so so the next person that um, that some people seem to be more interested in um, is uh, Ritz. He's a scout in the Hinterlands. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. I, it. I don't remember much more than that <laughs> yeah i mean i i, I kind of remember meeting ritz was ritz not female was ritz female see this is how little i remember mm-hmm. i yeah i'm pretty ritz, sure yeah. ritz was the female that met the mage um the female mage that ended up dying during a thingy anyway i remember um, the name but yeah. like it's yeah, it's. <laughs> I feel so bad, but like I don't remember much more about. Her. And I even tried to look Ritz up on Wiki, and it just said Scout in the Hinterlands. And, I mean, yeah. there was more about like the mission and stuff, but that was it. <laughs> so, but yeah, so, yeah, so people want to see more of Ritz. Okay, next is Elendra, the uh, mage in Gia. You didn't pick. Templars or mages from the My Lover's Phylactery quest. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, the reasoning for that was uh, um, we don't get a lot about the uh, Templar side. Um, I mean, we had, like, Cullen and stuff talking about, but there wasn't really, like, any to sort of serve as, like, a... What's the word? Like... I mean, it's possible that there are... I've never played the Templar. I've yeah. never sided with the Templars, ever. Yeah, me either. <laughs> so it's possible that there are others that you don't encounter unless you side with the Templars, which I feel like is a little... It's a little bit of a disservice. I almost feel like that you should... I'm not saying I agree with the Templar side. Absolutely not. I, I will strongly side with mages. Ah, uh, uh, like well, me as well. personally, I I will, I will. Um, I do w- eventually want to play the Templar route just to um know what those are like, what the other side is like, you know. But I'll always, I'm strongly pro mage, strongly. Um, but I do think um it is important to have like if you play Templars, then you should have people to come in to be a 
pro mage voices. Um, if you play, if you side with mages, I think you should have characters who come in who are pro Templar to like give the other view of it. And yeah. whether or not you agree with it is up to you. Personally, I think if you end up being pro Templar, that's problematic, but I still think it would be nice to have that other voice in there. Um, but yeah, that was the, uh, um, because Alendra was a mage who was sort who didn't want to pick a side, which is unique. That was mm -hmm. um, their uh, reason why they wanted to know more about her, which I think is really fascinating. So, yeah, I get that. No, I can. I yeah, I can understand that that reasoning completely because you know when you don't get to see an awful lot of a character who goes against what you would believe would be the norm for that character or for the normal stereotype. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the normal stereotype that character's character type falls into. Um, it can be quite intriguing. You know, you, mm -hmm. you can quite often be sort of left with a, well, what if situation as well, which mm -hmm. you're always, um, that always, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, adds a little bit of spice. Uh, uh, uh hold on. Thorn. What? Did I just... What does that say? That the next one, yeah. Did, there, there appears the to, <laughs> I was just thinking that there appears to have been a typo. <laughs> like, like, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna, do, I'm, I'm gonna say one thing, and one thing only. <laughs> like, seriously, one thing, and one thing only. Zebras, okay? Like that's all I'm gonna say. I don't need to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> the next episode will explain will explain <laughs> the uh, zebra's comment but <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so okay here's what happened I'm gonna talk about the grand old oak except I, I didn't write oak. oak I didn't write oak <laughs> no you didn't you wrote okay didn't you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from <laughs> Neither do I, but okie dokie. <laughs> um, and I, I just, I just have to. Okay, this is this was a suggestion from one of our friends. Um, and this is this has genuinely got to be the best way anybody has ever asked for something and... to be mentioned in one of our streams or podcasts or anything like that. Absolutely, <laughs> just. Fantastic! So, I I'm, I still laugh at it now. <laughs> like, um, uh, and uh, so so she's oh, there were also a couple other I forgot to include here too. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. But um, she, <laughs> she described the grand old oak as that rapper tree that wants his son back. <laughs> That is, and as I said, that's quite possibly the best way anyone has asked for something in one of these podcasts. Like, either from this channel or from any of my other, like, channels or anything. It's just the best thing anyone's asked for anything. Seriously, it's just, I laughed so hard, I almost made, like, a big snort noise. It was, it was quite unpleasant. Oh. Um. Uh. But yeah, I would love to see more of the rapper tree that wants his son back. <laughs> um. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'd like encounter him again or something. That would in be the next awesome. Game. That would be great. Yes, here's hoping he's not lost his nuts then too. Um, because seriously, I'm I'm not going digging into any more um hollowed out stumps looking for nuts. You know, keep a hold yeah. of your nuts, mate, and they won't get stolen. <laughs> Just saying, like, hand over them at all times. I mean, that's what most men do, isn't it? <laughs> um, she also said the girl that talked to dragons and got turned into tr a tranquil. 
I don't know what she's talking about. Do you know what yeah, she's talking I'm about? Not, I'm not entirely sure who she's talking about with that particular sentence either. Like, I'm not. I know who the last one is in that sentence, and I really want to read it out because it's just absolutely fucking amazing. Like, I just like, like I, I, I tried to look it up, and I couldn't quite. Maybe I'm using the wrong words on Google, but yeah, I, don't I know. couldn't find it. So no, I don't know. Kidding. I guess if anyone knows what we're talking about, please tell us. Yeah, um, please. But if you know who the girl that talked to dragons and got turned into a tranquil references, please do leave that in the comments below because we have not got a Scooby and frankly, my brain is itching right now <laughs> from trying to think about it. Um, However, the... the there is one that, and I really, I really, let me do this one. Okay, go ahead, Rose, go ahead. Because this is go just ahead. fantastic. Now, I can't remember his actual name. Perhaps you will be able to remember it. But this is just another fantastic description from our friend Elle. One-eyed Jimmy, who's obviously Odin and his demon-possessed <laughs> goat. Now, I, I know, I know who she's talking about, but... <laughs> But I don't, I, know, I don't remember I the name. Exactly, I know who she's exactly talking about, who she's talking about, but I cannot for the life of me remember his name. And my wiki isn't working properly right now, so I can't even look it up. I don't think anything's going to be rapper tree that wants his son No, back. <laughs> uh, genuinely, nope. No, although she, although she did ask for the hobo that lives in a stump and so- stole his son as well so i know. just put the hermit in the brazilian forest which would be would be fascinating like like why is he living in the brazilian forest why is he a hermit why does he speak in such a complex way why why is he very much a question for a question like why does he have yeah. a tent when quite literally everything he owns is inside of a tree stump why does he think a tree stump is a safe place to put your shit I have a lot of questions that I want answered. <laughs> we answer. all have a lot of questions we want answered about that hobo that lives in a stump and stole the grand old oak's son. Um, and Gonna then, be playing on that one for days. <laughs> like, that's just amazing. Um, and also, uh, um, Calpurnia was another one, which I immediately went, who the hell is Calpurnia? Mm-hmm. And um, I looked it up, and it turns out it is valid that I don't know who Calpurnia is because um, I never sided with the Templars, and you only uh. encounter her if you side with the Templars. Right, so that will be why neither of the two of us yeah. have a Scooby Doo who she is. <laughs> she, she's a Venatory mage, and I feel like. I've seen her name before, but I just didn't know who she was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually might have confused her with... I don't know why. For some reason, I confused her with Cothran. Uh, Loghain's, um, like... I don't want to say protege, but, like, the the one soldier woman who was very... She was very loyal to Loghain until, like, you finally say something and she's like... Oh, you're right. Actually, he has been acting a little weird. Please stop him at the lands meet. Mm-hmm. I always, for some reason, I'm like, oh, Calpurnia, wasn't she that? No, that's Cothran. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. So now I have to play a Templar. I already wanted to play one just to see the differences, but yeah. now I, I'm really curious about Calpurnia, and I need to play a Templar playthrough. Yeah, no. So I get that. I understand that completely. It can be really you know, um, confusing and quite intriguing when you come across characters that you haven't met before because the playthrough that you did didn't involve the, you know, the organization that they were involved in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I get that. I get that one as well. And obviously, uh, we also got asked about the uh, jealous little dwarf that makes a fake sequel to Farrick's books. I don't remember if he even had a name. No, neither do I. I tried to uh, look it up. I, I typed in stuff about, like, Dragon Age Inquisition, fake sequel Varric's books, and all I got was, like, stuff about Varric's fake book from Dragon Age is <laughs> now being published, and they're talking about Hard in Hightown, mm-hmm. and that's not what I was looking for. 
yeah, it's not what you were looking for. That is, however, a topic for another one of our videos in the future. We're going to yeah. review that. So, Wasn't that you know. just a War Table mission? The sequel? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think it was um, a War Table mission. I think it might have been a couple of linked War Table missions. Like, not a great long yeah. chain. Yeah, no, I, I but, get like, you. like, three or four. Mm -hmm. That sounds correct. Yeah. It would be interesting if, if, if he's in the next game, if, like, that catches up to him and suddenly there's, like, these books that are being sold under his name, but they're so poorly written. And he's like, no, this isn't me. And, like, suddenly people are like, wow, Eric's writing has really gone downhill. And he's like, no, this isn't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We really need to, like, there, there's so much, like... Oh, I don't think people understand just exactly how much there is to, like, just how much stuff there is that you can look into or, like, put your imagination into and come up with ideas about in the Dragon Age franchise and the, mm -hmm. the lore and everything like that. There's so much. The lore is so rich and the stories that they write for the characters they put in and even, so, like, even some of the NPCs that we're talking about, like you know, Wade and Heron. You know, they, they'll ha have an intricate backstory for them that only they know, which mm -hmm. is somehow played out in the way that the characters behave with each other. And I love that, right? I love how in-depth you can get with stuff like this, because I do love a deep dive. I mean, I think we've established that by now. Thorn loves a deep dive. Like, it is entirely possible that some of this is just us over-speculating. Oh, there's but, a good chance. There's a lot of it just us over-speculating. But I do but think there is some stuff that is... Podcast. Yeah. I do think there is some stuff that for sure they do not put in the game and then we just sort of have to infer. Mm. And I just, I, I, I just love that. Even the NPCs you can get so deep with. And that's just a testament to how great the writing is that you even grow to care about the NPCs. Mm -hmm. And there's so many. Like, this isn't even a complete list. This, these are just the ones that we thought of, we found that people seem to be interested in, and we asked around. Like, this is not... There are so many other great NPCs out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, there are so many options for who people could have asked for in this list. And I'm sure that we. it's entirely possible that if we get enough comments and stuff on this video that we'll probably end up doing a, a follow-up to it, maybe with like a, an actual numerical list. We might do a poll or like there's any number of options that we can do to cover either more names, more NPCs. You know, the, the list is endless, but simply because there is so much lore out there for Dragon Age because the lore is so sickly woven and so rich there is so much to be looked into so you know i feel like flemeth is another one that people would be really interested in just because so much is so mysterious about her but i also feel like it quite possibly she's one that's very very likely uh we're gonna know more about her um oh yeah but there's just so much, like, there, all of these legends about her and stuff. It's like, what's true, what's not, you know, and all that. And So, yeah, but. Yes. I think that is, a, we've come to the end of our list, I do believe. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we were also asked for some characters like Anders, Benris, Sigrun, Zevran, Dorian, and Sarah. <clears throat> But, I mean, I think there's Those a lot, really there's a lot NPCs, more though. stuff. No, not really. There's a lot more stuff out there about those characters than there. I mean, we would all love to know more about them. Yeah. No two ways about it. I mean, I'm not, you know, completely brushing the, the idea off altogether of maybe doing a deeper dive on those for a different video, but, you know, actually, like, having a closer look at the characters of the characters in the games um, and the kind of people they are and stuff but it's just I, I think there's because there's such a barrage of information out there about most of these characters 
it just seems sort of a bit much to add them in to one where most of the characters are either so well known that people are desperate to know more about them or quite niche characters but that don't already have an awful lot of backstory out there Mm -hmm. so it makes it makes sense for a different kind of video just not so much for this one i don't think well i also think we know as much about fenris as he knows because he doesn't really remember oh yeah absolutely his his childhood that much so right anyway I do believe that is us for this evening. So, it's time to get on to our question of the week. So, you want to throw down in the comments down below who your favourite NPC of the entire franchise is and how you would like to interact with them in DA4 if it's possible. Thank you all so much for joining us for this conversation. If you stay to the end, you're a legend. If you've enjoyed yourselves, make sure to smack that like button with a quick stone fist. And if you didn't, well then, may the dread wolf take you. We do hope you'll join us again. And if you want to make sure you can, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss our uploads. We hope you have a fantastic week ahead and with all the blessings of Andraste and the Maker. Um, and the light of Elgarnan and Mithal to guide your way, may Silas keep your Aravel warm and full. We'll see you next time we journey to the left of the Fade. Good Goodbye! Bye.